Pag sinabing action camera, one brand that usually comes to mind is the brand GoPro. With that being said, magre-review tayo ng isang GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition. By the way, if it's your first time here, welcome. If dati ka ng subscriber, welcome back. So today, kaya nang sabi ko, we are reviewing a GoPro Hero 4 Silver. So itong camera na to is an action camera. So maliit na camera, pwede siya sa mga action sports, mga travel videos, even mga short film. May mga instances na kailangan mo ang camera na to. POV shots or maybe mga tight spaces na kailangan mo. Maliit na camera lang, ito pwedeng pwede siya. So this camera was released October 2014. So medyo matagal na siya. Pero may mga iilan pa rin mga tao kagaya ko or kagaya ng ibang content creator or YouTuber na gumagamit ito. So ngayong araw, sasagutin natin yung tanong na Worth it pa ba ang GoPro Hero 4 Silver ngayong 2020? Gaya ng sabi ko, this is an old camera. In terms of specs, medyo may kalumaan na nga. So this camera is capable of shooting a video, a photo, a time-lapse. Now, the highest resolution na pwedeng i-shoot ng camera nito is 4K at 15 FPS. Not really usable. At least minimum of 24 dapat. So it can shoot 2.7K. It can shoot 1440p, 1080p, and 720p. Pinaka highest na frame rate na kaya niyang i-shoot is 720p, 120fps. Maganda siya for slow motion. Now, 720 is not really that good as far as resolution is concerned. Most of the time, nakikita natin ngayon, yung resolution ng mga monitor natin, mga cellphone, TV, is at least 1080p. 1920 by 1080. So medyo behind na siya as far as the 120fps frame rate is concerned. Sa 1080p resolution naman, meron siyang maximum of 60fps. 60fps is enough for slow motion but not really that slow. At least you can slow down up to 40%. Yung GoPro Hero 4 Silver din is capable of shooting 1080p super view. Wide na wide talaga. So ito yung trademark ng GoPro, super view mode. So, yun yung mga basic na specs niya. Of course, it can also shoot photos, kaya niya mag time lapse, video lapse, saka long exposure photography. Kung ikukumpara natin ang GoPro Hero 4 Silver, into something like this, the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Yung pinaka-major advantage ng mga bagong GoPro, which is 5, 6, 7, and 8, is the stabilization. Although not really perfect, but usable and somehow makukumpara mo siya sa isang gimbal. Yun ang advantage nito. This one, wala pa siyang stabilization. Kunwari, kung naglalakad ka, tapos medyo magalaw yung kamay mo habang nagsushoot, uh, makikita siya sa footage. Hindi naman lahat ng pagkakataon kailangan mong mag-shoot ng lalakad ka. Merong mga pagkakataong steady lang yung shot. So, personally speaking, I am a model vlogger. I started with this one. Way back 2018, nag-start ako mag model vlog. Although, mga ride ko, gumagamit na ako nito. Way back 2015 pa. I'm confident enough na even with this, with this camera, I can still manage to output decent enough footage or decent enough contents with just this camera. I need to mention pala, yung GoPro Hero 4 and above, itong camera na to is capable of providing you manual controls. Ibig sabihin lang ng ProTune is may mga settings sa camera na kaya mong kontrolin manually. Ah, settings like ISO, shutter speed, white balance, and lastly, yung color profile. Meron na siyang flat profile. Maganda siya sa color grading. Yun yung isa sa kinaganda nito. So, as far as mounts is concerned, wala kang problema doon. Compatible naman siya kahit sa mga lumang version at sa mga bagong version ng GoPro. So, another thing na kinaganda ng camera na to is the mic input. Aside sa maganda yung pickup ng mic nito, kasi yung mic input niya, di katulad ng bagong GoPro ngayon na mahihirapan ka kasi mahal saka hahanapin mo pa. Just to give you an idea, ang mga mic adapter ng bagong GoPro 5, 6, 7, and 8 cost around 3,000 plus. Compared nito, mic adapter kasama yung mic, 200 to 500 pesos. Kung kinakabahan ka naman, baka wala nang mabibiling battery kasi medyo may katagalan na. Meron ka pa rin mabibiling battery nito. Mostly third-party batteries na siya but still, Capable pa rin siya. Tanungin nyo naman, anong ginagamit na battery ko? Hindi siya original, telesin yung brand niya, pero it can still last around 1 hour. 1080p recording, around 60fps. Yung pinaka-major disadvantage lang talaga nito is it's not stabilized. The way I use it, nagbablog ako, a helmet mount siya, and yung shakiness niya, it adds character. Ang nagbibigay ng energy sa shot ko. Although, Masasabi ko rin na maganda rin yung stabilized. Most of us, yung consumption natin sa media, sa platform ng YouTube, 
Facebook, 1080p lang yung usual uploads natin. I'm not really after sa isang 4K resolution. Malaki yung resolution, mahirap i-edit. Malaki yung memory card na kailangan. I am seeing it as a disadvantage sa sa part ko kasi memory ng camera ko maliit lang, yung memory ng computer ko maliit lang din. So for what I need, 1080p is enough. Tatanungin mo ako, is it worth it na bumili or gumamit ng camera na to ngayong 2020? Ang sagot ko diyan is a big thumbs up. You can still use this or you can buy this camera because it can still output decent enough footages. It can still capture 1080p at 60fps. Pwedeng-pwede siya, especially if nagsisimula ka palang gumawa ng content sa YouTube, sa Facebook, shooting a travel video, wala ka namang masyadong budget na malaki. Kasi you can buy this one at around 5,000 pesos second hand. Maybe around 4,000 kung maswerte ka. Kung baga, sasabihin na natin moto vlogging starter pack or travel vlog starter pack. For me, ha, if you don't have the budget to buy the latest and greatest, just buy this one. GoPro Hero 4 Silver. It's not the camera. It's the content. Content is king. Sabi ni Casey Neistat. Anyway, that would be all for this review. Again, this is your boy, Jeriel. This is my channel, Jake Out Vlogs. Seeing you. Bye-bye.